So figures of his speech. A figure of his speech is a deliberate deviation from common ordinary language. Common language, sentence after sentence, it becomes commonplace. So to create an extraordinary effect, to heighten the impact, uh, figures of his speech are used. So the basic thing is uh, as to what is a figure of his speech. A figure of his speech is a deliberate deviation from common language. Now, there are many types of figures of his speech and within each type there are many subtypes also. Within each type there are subtypes also. So the, here we will talk of some major, some important uh, figures of his speech which uh, you students must know. So the first is uh, as is uh, commonly assumed, alliteration. Alliteration is repetition of sounds. In his schools, we were all taught Charu Chandra ki Chanchal Kirne. So, Cha Cha, that is repetition, alliteration. Um, in English literature, it is there in abundant. Uh, authors, poets have used it in abundance. Uh, one example which is uh, very sweet is the soul selects her own company. The soul selects her own company. Emily Dickinson, 303, poem number 303. There she uses this alliteration. So alliteration is uh, a figure of his speech. And uh, a related figure of his speech is anaphora. A-N-A-P-H-O-R-A, anaphora, where phrases begin, uh, phrases beginning with the same word uh, are used. Phrases beginning with the same word are, are used. For example, Julius Caesar says, I came, I saw, I conquered. So, I, I, I. Uh, again, Shakespeare, John 2, uh, Shakespeare says, mad world, mad kings, mad composition. So again, mad, bad, mad. So phrases beginning with the same word, that is anaphora. Now, uh, euphism, E-U-P-H-E-M-I-S-M, -E euphism. Euphism is understatement. When something is very serious, something is very intense, something is uh, very big and uh, instead of saying it like that, we make an under... Any, any example, say, uh, if we say, oh, okay, Hitler was not that sweet. So, I mean, what? Hitler was so cruel and he, he was a dictator and he killed so many people. And you're saying he is not so sweet. So, that is an euphism, understatement. Then uh, just opposite to euphism is hyperbole, atishayokti, uh, where exaggeration is used. Just uh, our mother say very common, hazar bar bola hai. So hazar bar bola hai, sunte nahi ho matlab? Hazar bar to koi bolta nahi. That's an, uh, that's an exaggeration. So that is hyperbole. Um, uh, in uh, literature also, W.H. Auden, a beautiful example comes when he says, I love you dear, I love you till China and Africa meet and the river jumps over the mountain. So I love you till China and Africa meet and the river jumps over the mountain. So uh, exaggeration. So it is uh, a figure of his speech, hyperbole. Euphism and hyperbole uh, are uh, contradictory. They, they, are, they are two ends of the spectrum. Then we have a group of uh, figures of speech which everyone must know. Anybody who claims to know English language and who uses English language should know. And people generally don't know. Irony, satire and humor. 
People do not know the difference between irony, satire and humor. You make a light-hearted comment, you are humorous and they will not be able to understand. They will take it as uh, something sat satirical. And if you make a satirical statement, they will not understand it altogether. So this is, uh, this is uh, one thing that students and all of us must know. Irony, you see, is serious. It is like a marred contrast between what is said and what is meant. A marred contrast between what is said and what is meant. In Chaucer, you see, he is describing the nun. He is describing uh, the, the church people and the nun there. And then describing the son, uh, the, describing the nun, he says that, okay, she was very fashionable, her sense of dress was very good, and her locket was very costly. I mean, you are describing a nun. So describe her kindness, her large-heartedness, her, uh, her charity. No. So that is irony, where he is actually criticizing the nun, but saying something entirely different. Another example, ancient mariner, water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. The mariner is surrounded by sea water, but it is salty, cannot be, he cannot drink it. Water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink. So, um, a, a irony is a, a marred difference between what is being said and what is being meant. Satire is similar, but satire is milder. Satire is for improvement, where the author uh, 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 wants to convey the meaning and where, where, where the author wants to uh, uh, make a change, make a difference, wants to improve the situation. Uh, just say, abhi ye lockdown chal raha hai. So I say, say or anybody say, okay, samaj mein aaya, ab janwaro ko kaisa lagta hai? We are caged. Do you know now how do animals feel when they are caged? So this is satire. This is, uh, and, and it is aimed at improvement. So better improve your behavior towards animals. So that is, that is satire. And humor is simple joke. It is, uh, it is for laughter, it is good-hearted, it is light-hearted and uh, anybody who is able to laugh at herself is the, has the sense of humor. So humor is simple, uh, satire is for improvement and irony is bit pungent. Irony is something uh, which really hits. So these are, uh, this is a very fine distinctions, but I, uh, I think everybody should know, anyone who uses language should know the difference between irony, satire and humor. Then uh, two very famous figures of his speech, sim simile and metaphor. So this is uh, not difficult at all. When a thing is compared to something else, that is simile. And when a thing is called that thing, that particular, for example, um, I wandered lonely as a cloud. Daffodils, Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud, as a cloud, like a cloud. So this is simile. And if I say, I am the cloud, I am cloud, that is metaphor. So, uh, 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 time is money. Time is money, metaphor. Time is like money, simile. All the world's a stage. All the world is a stage, metaphor. And had the bard said the, the world is like a stage, it would have been simile. So, simile and matter. Um, I, I am reminded of the ultimate uh, simile. The ultimate simile, uh, Goswami Tulsi Das Ji has used it for uh, toddler Ram. Um, uh, Tulsi Das Ati Anand, Ati Anand, Dekhi Ke Mukhar Bind, Raghubar Ki Chhabi Saman, Raghubar Chhabi Baniya that the image of toddler Ram is like Ram only. 
ocean, wind, forest, flower, moon, sun, useless. Cannot be compared to the face of Lord Ram because the face of uh, Lord Ram, child Ram, is like Ram only. That is, that is the ultimate uh, simile Goswami Tulsidas Ji has used in that bhajan, Tumaki Chanat Ram Chandra. So, uh, simile and metaphor are, uh, are the, uh, the weapons of a poet. They make things so clear and they are very, uh, uh, they are much, much used also, much used. Then uh, we have anomatopoeia. O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A -E Anomatopoeia Where words re reflect the meaning Where words, uh, the sound of words uh, reflects the meaning Like rain, pitter patter, train, trin trin So the, the word trin trin reflects train Pitter patter, it reflects rain uh, Drip drop, water drip drop so drip drop again dri reflects the sound of water. So uh, whoosh, whoosh whistled, whistling whoosh. So whoosh bird, uh, it, uh, it reflects whis whistling. So anomatopoeia is uh, where a word, uh, the sound of the word reflects the meaning. That is anomatopoeia. Then we have oxymoron. Oxymoron is where two contradictory words are used together. Two contradictory words are used together. Sweet sorrow, silent scream and it is uh, just limited to that. Where two words, uh, two uh, contradictory words are used together. But antithesis uh, is also like oxymoron, but it is deeper. It, it conveys a logical uh, statement. It gives you uh, a logical statement by using two contradictory words. For example, when um, man uh, entered moon, so the famous line was, one is small step for man, a giant leap for humankind. Neil, Ar Neil Armstrong, he said. So it was said, uh, so he, one step, it was just one step for a man, but a giant leap for humankind. So antithesis is deeper. Oxymoron is just play of words. Two uh, 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 contradictory words are used. But in anti antithesis, a whole meaning is conveyed through contradictory words. United we stand, divided we fall. It's a meaningful sentence. It conveys a meaning by using contradictory words. So that is antithesis. Now paradox, a, a, a similar, a similar uh, figure of his speech is uh, paradox. It, like uh, in animal form, George George Orwell writes, all animals are, animals are equal, but some are more equal. Like um, uh, an enemy's friend is enemy. That is paradox. Paradox stands somewhere between an oxymoron and an antithesis. Antithesis is, uh, conveys a logical meaning. Paradox is similar and uh, um, oxymoron is just a use of two contradictory words. So these are again uh, very uh, similar uh, figures of his speech and we should know the fine difference between the three. Then we have personification where non-human things are given human traits. It is commonly used that the flowers loved and the moon peeped through the sky. Moon cannot peep through the sky. Human beings peep through. Human beings laugh. So the flowers laughed, the moon laughed, the moon peeped through the sky. So when a non-human thing is given human attributes, that is personification. Then we have Synecdoch, S-Y-N-E-C-D-O-C-H-E, 
Sainik Dock. Sainik Dock, Robert Frost. Robert Frost is a master of Sainik Dock, where a part reflects the whole. For example, if I want to uh, talk of the whole tree, instead of talking about the whole tree, I talk about the leaf. So a leaf represents the whole tree. कितने बार बासुरी बासुरी बनाती मतलब पूरे भगवान कृष्ण को हमने दर्शा दिया सुदर्शन चक्र दिखा दिया मतलब पूरे भगवान कृष्ण को हमने रेफर कर दिया सो दैट इज साइनिक टॉक वेयर अ पार्ट इज यूज फॉर द होल इट्स इट्स अ फैसिनेटिंग वर्ल्ड ऑफ फिगर्स ऑफ स्पीच एंड इट इट रिफ्लेक्ट्स द फाइनरीज of language and we should know it climax and anti climax again uh, one uh, one exam one more uh, type i want to give because this is not a, a comprehensive list at all as i told you there are uh, so many figures of speech and uh, each type has so many subtypes so you have to study them climax is where slowly a thing uh, is built in the sentence and it reaches the heightened effect in the end for example the troops uh, gathered and there was thundering of war so that is climax and anti climax is just the opposite of khoda pahad nikli chui hai that uh, that uh, there was a uh, the troops gathered and they started laughing so that is anti climax so um, uh, um, climax and anti climax again related uh, figures of speech two ends of the spectrum so these are some of the figures of speech and uh, uh, it's uh, as i said very interesting and it makes the, the finer the distinction the the fineries of figures of speech make our language beautiful it may they makes the language is strong effective and it is as it is figure a figure of his speech is called uh, language decoration of language ornamentation of language so as it is it is a very beautiful area so this is for today thank you